Hi everyone, Adam here. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to deal with metrics where a lower value means better, like a 10 meter sprint time, a 20 meter sprint time, body fat, so on and so forth. In the last video, we created scores for each of these metrics. Or I should say we created scores over the past couple of videos. In the last video, we decided on the score that we wanted to use and, ap and apply that score to all of these metrics. What we still need to do is we need to figure out how to deal with metrics where lower is better. There are a couple ways to deal with this, and the way that you deal with it uh, partially will depend on the score that you selected. If you, if you selected a z-score where there are negative numbers and positive numbers, there will be a different strategy than if you selected a score that's between 0 and 100. We're going to start with how to do it if a score is between 0 and 100. All you have to do is subtract 100 from these calculations for the metrics where lower is better. So for example, this person currently has a score of 90.5 for 10 meter sprint score. Let's look at what their 10 meter sprint time was. Their 10 meter sprint time was 1.89, which seems to be higher than a lot of the other values. It's doubtful that they actually should have received a score so high, 90.5. It's more likely that they received a really low score because their value is really high. To change this score, before the 100 times, we can just do 100 minus and click enter. And we can do that for each of the scores where lower is better. So we can apply that to the 20 meter sprint score, 100 minus, and we can apply that to the body fat score. At least those are my three metrics where lower is better, 100 minus and click enter. And then we can copy the formulas again, or all of them, if we'd like to, and paste them to the bottom of our sheet. And now all of our scores are updated. It's as simple as that. If you want to do this in a more complex way, we're going to get there in a moment. For z-scores, instead of doing 100 minus, You'll want to do, well, first of all, the equation will be different, but you'll want to multiply this value by negative 1 to get the inverse z-score. So in that case, whatever this formula is, we would do minus 1 asterisk or minus 1 times and click enter. And you would do that for each of the metrics where your z-score is lower is better. What you should see is that if you have a z-score of minus 2, it'll go to plus 2, and vice versa. That's what you want. Okay, I just undid that, and I'm actually going to undo everything. Undo everything that I just did. Oops, I guess I changed the color. Now our scores are back to their original scores, and we are not considering whether a lower is better. A more automated way to do this that uses the admin area that we set up prior is... I don't want to say it's bad practice, but it's certainly a workaround and something that I would try to avoid applying <laughs> if possible. What we can do here is we can add a row above our first row in our table. I'm going to remove the formatting, and it doesn't have to be right here, but it makes the most sense to put it right here so that you can see what's going on. What we want to do is we want to get the metric names for the score metrics above each of the score metrics. Do you remember when we went into these headers and we said equals and the name of the metric and then the word score after it? We're going to do something similar. We'll go equals in the row above our, our metrics equals the first metric that we have, CMJ trial 1, and click enter. Let me just turn this font to black. So what we should see is we should see the name of the metric above the score of the metric. Now what we want to do is we want to copy and paste this formula across all of our metrics. So we can copy it, paste it across all of our metrics. And what we should see is the metric name right above the metric score. One thing that I would advise doing, and if you purchase the file, this will all be done for you, is I would advise adding in extra columns not five, more than five, I'm just doing this for example, and maybe this is extra metric one, 
extra metric two to give yourself a leeway for a couple of extra metrics that you want to add. So let's say we have five of them. And then do the same thing here. So we have a formula that says the, we want the name of the metric and then the word score after it for our headers. We just copy that formula or both of these formulas together for that matter and paste them across a couple more times. We should see that we have this set up for the next five metrics. So if you do add more data um, and you replace the header, like let's say instead of extra metric one, this is now called, I don't know, pull-ups. Now we're going to have a score for pull-ups. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to change it back to extra metric one. And now we'll start our calculation, which will be pretty complicated. Which is why I advise on the first option, um, just because it's less complicated. And if you if you understand how to do what we did, what we just did, it's it's fairly simple, and you really don't have to worry about it unless you're moving things around all the time in your database. But let's get started on this. So I'm going to open up the formula bar because this is going to be a big one. After this if statement, right before the 100, I'm going to hold down Alt and click Enter on my uh, PC to give this thing some space because it makes it easier to read, for me at least. And we're going to use another if statement, and we're going to use data from our admin area to accomplish this. So we'll say if, and then we're going to go index, and I'm just going to do a space. I never know how this works, because um, my sheet always closes. No, I did it again. I never know how this works. I wish I knew. Eventually, I'll get there. All right, there we go. I got it to stay. I think I've found a strategy. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if index and select column F in our admin area, comma, match, open parenthesis, one, comma, and column E in our admin area, comma, zero, close the parentheses, two of them, equals true comma, and then we'll do alt enter, and we're going to copy and paste everything that's above here, or everything that's below, so the 100 times J3 or minus minus our entire scoring thing, we'll copy and paste it above, but before the 100, we're going to do 100 minus 100 times, and then at the end of this string, so we'll go if index admin f to f match one admin e to e equals true, comma, if that's true, then we want to do 100 minus this whole big scoring thing, comma, if that's not true, then we'll do whatever this is. We'll just have to remove a parenthesis here and add in a couple here. And this is not going to work for now, but let's click enter. I just need enough parentheses for this to work. Perfect. Now this doesn't work right now, but I'm going to leave this screen up for a second so you can see exactly what mine looks like. We need to make a couple of manipulations. The first is that we're going to change this one to be AG1 here. And then after we do that, we're going to lock some things in with dollar signs. So we'll do a dollar sign before these Fs, a dollar sign before the number one here, and a dollar sign before the Es here. And we can click enter. Great. And that's the formula. I'm going to explain it now. What we're saying is the first thing that we're saying is if J3 equals blank, then we want this cell to be blank. So, in other words, if there's no CMJ trial one data, then make this cell blank. And then if that's not true, then we want to do another if statement and we want to say, hey, if uh, whatever is in admin F to F is true when this metric matches matches what's in here, right? So we're looking up these metrics in here. And we're saying, all right, let's find out when this metric matches up with these metrics. So we're looking for CMJ trial one, and we're looking in here in this in this admin area, 
and we're looking, all right, CMJ trial one, and we're looking in column F to figure out whether or not that's true. And if it's true, in other words, if we decide to check the checkbox, then what happens? Let's go back to our testing data. So if what we find by matching this metric here, which is a metric in our database, to that list of metrics, which are all the metrics in our database, when we match that, if the column next to it, which is a checkbox that we decide to check or not, if that is true, comma, then we want to do 100 minus our formula. And if that's not true, we want to just do our standard formula. Now that checkbox being true or not is something that we set up where we decided we're going to check that checkbox for our metrics when that metric or when for that metric a lower value is a quote unquote better value. So that's the formula. And if I click enter, and notice right now, remember this 10 meter sprint score is 90.5, which is not accurate. I'm going to copy this formula and paste it across all of our metrics, including these extra metrics. Let's check on our 10 meter sprint score. And now it's 9.5. That's more what we were expecting. It's treating the lower values as better in the cases where we check it off in our admin area. So we control this in our admin area now and not with 100 minus in each of these columns. That's the difference between these two methods. And then the final step here is if we copy these formulas and we paste them to the bottom of our sheets, now it'll apply to everyone for all the instances. And we don't have to worry about 100 minus anything. If we decide, for example, we can test this. Right now, CMJ trial three, look at this 91 in row four. Right now, CMJ trial three is treated as higher is better. Let's see what happens if we treat it as lower is better. So we'll go to our admin area and say, you know what, CMJ trial three, that should be lower is better. Let's go to our testing data. And now it's a nine. So we can see that it works. Instead of it being a 91, it's now a nine, which is great. And that's all I have for this video. Again, I advise for the first approach because it's a lot simpler and I don't like having, I really don't like having a row above this header row of our table. That's not very good practice. And like I said, this, this could live somewhere else, but it's easy for you to see when it's here, whether or not the metrics are lining up appropriately with the scores, um, which is good for troubleshooting. In any case, thanks for watching. In the next video, we are going to go over category scores. So we're going to learn how to create category scores and overall scores. And I think that that's really valuable because what we're able to do is we're able to segregate physiological and physical constructs and pull some metrics together to give us a bigger picture type of view of, of an athlete before we dive into the nitty gritty details, which is helpful, especially if, if you want to be efficient um, with uh, all the things that you need to manage and all the programming that you need to get to and do. I like having an overview and just checking things out bigger picture before delving into the details, which can be overwhelming and a bit confusing. So I hope that this video was helpful. If it was, please make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you do that too, particularly if you've been enjoying the content so far in this series or other pieces of content on the channel in general. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we do some category and overall scores.